Uh, so now let's talk about uh, the number. So we have already mentioned that um, there are two types of numbers. The first is integer. So those are just uh, the whole number. And when we declare a number in Python, so we don't need a quotation mark. So for example, number one, if you use quotation mark, so that will be a string. And if you do not use a quotation mark, so that will be an integer. And the float means that the number with period, so representing a certain level of the precision. So for example, if you use number one dot, <coughs> which indicate decimals, although the values, they are same, but this one, um, Python, we are consider that as a float. OK, so that is how we define the numbers. Um, we can use those many uh, just normal calculations. For example, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, 2 subtract 1 equals 1. 2 multiple 2 equals 4. You know, and divide. So uh, 2 divided by 1 equals 2. OK, so those um, very basic um, calculations. If you are using the, uh, the two multiple uh, symbols that represent exponents. So for example, 2 times 3 equals 6. However, if you use 2 and use two m multiple symbols, 3, so that equals 8. Okay, because this indicate exponent. And also another thing that keep in mind is that so when we calculate integers, the result can be different um, depending on the version of the Python interpreter. So we mentioned there are two major versions of the interpreter, 2.x and also 3.x. So in 2.x, integer divided by integer we are always give you an integer. OK, so what does that mean? So that means uh, in, in 2.7, if you say, OK, 1 divided by 2, the result is 0. OK, we know that is not right mathematically, but that is how uh, the Python work in 2 point version. However, if you use float, so divided by 2, the result is a float. In two point, in Python three point x, now that is different. So in Python three, uh, one divided by two, we will have a float. Okay, so depending on which version of the interpreter you are using, so pay attention to this difference. Uh, again, as I said, nowadays most of the people are now using three point version. So three point four, three point six, three point seven, etc. All right, uh, date container. So we know that there are two <coughs> types of data, number and also strings. For number, we have integers and also we have the float. And the data container is um, a place that can hold one or multiple data. So the first one is a variable. OK, so you can, you can think variable as a label that gives and the value a name. Okay, so that is a variable. The second one is a list. So list is something like you can you can organize multiple values in one list. Okay, so a list is a place where you can have multiple values. And the third container is called a dictionary. So dictionary is like list that you can have multiple values. However, they follow a very specific structure. So the, the structure is key value, key value pairs. OK, so that is a dictionary. So we will talk about the list and also dictionary in the next week. So today, let's talk about the variable. <clears throat> Again, so the variable is just give the data and label so that you can call the data by calling the label so every single value in python is an object okay uh, so object is a little bit abstract concept 
just remember that every value in Python is an object. And a variable is a label that refers to the Python object. So for example, if you have a val number one, we will define that one. So that is an object in Python. And you can refer it by different labels. So for example, you can call it my number. OK, so next time we are calling my number, so it will just refer to the value number one. And you can change the value of the variable in your program at any time. And the Python will always keep track of its current value. So for example, when you define a, a variable that is my number, and you can just assign the value number one, so that refer to number one. And later on, you can refer that one to number two or number three. <clears throat> OK, and the Python will just keep the, the latest one. So in this case, that is number three. And when we define the variables, so the reason we want to use variable is sometimes, for example, the, the value is very long that we want to use a short uh, name to call that value, or sometimes we want to give the value of meaningful name. So in uh, so when we define the variables, the name of the variable should be meaningful. OK, so you should not define variable like A, B, C, those random variables. So that will not help. And you cannot use the keywords in Python as the variable name, because those keywords are already being used. So you cannot use the keywords. The variable name can start with strings or underscores. So for example, you can have like my underscore name. Or you can start with underscore my underscore name or number, sorry. Uh, the variable can contain numbers, strings, and also underscores. For example, my number first, so one number okay however you cannot start the variable with a number so the number can only be in the middle or the end of the variable name so to make the variable to be easy to understand so normally we use end scores to separate letters within the variable so for reading purposes so for example when I define I will say my end score number OK, so that is easier uh, for us to understand. So what the variable is talking about. OK, uh, so let's try something in our uh, lecture two uh, Python file. So for example, let's define a first variable. So let's call it my and it's called str string. And let's call it hello world. OK. So here what we did is uh, we have a data that string that is an object in Python. And we use this variable to refer to this abstract, abs uh, to this uh, object. So now if we print my string, let's put that one in the comment. So you can see it will print hello world. OK, so now you can use my string refer as the hello world, and it is always to be uh, the hello world. However, if you change that my, let's see, my string to uh, second string, and let's print my string again. OK, so in this case, we define the hello world as a string, and we use my string to refer to that value. So that's why that when we print my string here, we get this result. And the next, we change the that uh, we use this variable to refer to a different uh, string value. So now if we print my string, you can see it will refer to the my string, the second string. OK. <clears throat> Let's define another one. So let's say my integer equals 2 and my 
float equals 2.0. Okay, so now let's say print my integer plus 3. Okay, so my integer equals 2, so my integer plus 3, we will have 5. <clears throat> oh, this should be end score. Okay, so we have 5. And if we use my integer times 3, so in this case we will have number 6. Right, number 6. And if we use my integer and we use two multiple symbols, okay, so this will calculate the exponent. So you can see the, the value is 8. Okay, and we can also say print my integer plus my float. Okay, so the result is uh, 4, and that is a float. Okay, so that is how we use variables. So we use variables to refer to different values, and variable only keep the latest, the current value. So even you, when you change the, the values that variable refers to, and Python only keep track and also always tracks the, uh, the current values. And you can use those variables to do the calculations. And also make sure that your variable names are making sense uh, to be meaningful. And you can use var uh, variable to define variables that start with uh, integer uh, uh, strings or underscores. And, and the variable name can contain strings, underscores, and also numbers. Okay, uh, so finally, so as I said, you cannot use the keywords uh, as the variable names. So here are the keywords that in Python, so like false, non, true, and, as, etc. So those are the keywords that you should try to avoid. And we will, t so some other uh, built-in functions and also some other spatial data type uh, in Python. Uh, so we will uh, cover some of those keywords in our future lectures. Okay, uh, so before we uh, finish our lectures, uh, we also want to upload our lectures to our GitHub so that uh, it can remind us later on so um, that you can always check your lectures, uh, the Python code from your lectures. So uh, let's go to terminal and let's make sure that we are inside of this local repository. And let's just do the, the same, uh, run the same GitHub code. So that is git add dash dash all. And git commit dash m. Let's add the comments. That is lecture two. Uh, you can write your own comments. And let's say git push. OK. Uh, so now that has been uploaded to our uh, GitHub. Uh, so let's check that one. So the GitHub. Yes, lecture two is just uploaded. Okay. 